God bless each and every one of you. We welcome you to the program tonight. This is Word of Power Gospel R. I'm Reverend Ronald Davis. I'm a, I've been a pastor, and I'm waiting for the Lord to open the door up again. Give us a church again. Can I hear an amen? Amen. And I've been an evangelist. I've been very fortunate. I've gotten to go to India twice. I've been to Mexico three times. I've gotten to travel the world over pretty good. And, and back in earlier years, I've been to Germany and some different places. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus said this gospel must go into the whole world as a witness in the end to come. We need to get this gospel out. Amen. We need to preach this gospel to every person, every country, every family, every nation. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We need to get it out. Hallelujah. We need to publish it. Hallelujah. It's already been published. Can has the Bible. We need to publish it verbally. Can I hear an amen? And preach it. Hallelujah. Get people Bibles. Hallelujah. Get them saved. Hallelujah. That's what the gospel's all about. Jesus died for our sins. Reconcile us back to God. Put us in right standing again. Because he created us in his image and likeness. We lost that in the fall. Because of sin. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We took on what? We took on the, the character and nature of the devil. Come on. Yes. Being honest, truthful. But the Holy Spirit was come back, came back and sent back to what? Over in the book of Titus, talking the word about the work of regeneration. What's the work of regeneration? That's the working of the Holy Spirit within our hearts, transforming us and changing us back into the image and likeness of the Almighty living God. Can I hear an amen? Isn't that what you want? That's what I want. Because that's the way I was made. Something happened. Something happened in that fall. We lost God's identity. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I want to identify with God, not the devil. Do you? Amen. amen. I worked for him long enough for when I was crazy out in the world running the center. Hallelujah. I look just like him. act just like him. Now, since I've been born again to save, I want to look like God and I want to act like God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank God he sent back the Holy Spirit. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for God that he sent him. Thank God yes. Jesus was willing. Amen. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Thank God for the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Are you fired up and excited about Jesus today and, uh, and God and the Holy Spirit? I am. I don't know about you. But but you need to be. You need you need your fire lit again. And I pray that God will make me like a Holy Ghost flamethrower to light your fire again. Hallelujah. Some of y'all need your pilot lights lit again. Even your <laughs> pilot light went out. Come on. <laughs> when your pilot light goes out, you're really in trouble. Because you know what? Even if you have a pilot light, it will ignite the fire. Can I hear an amen? The gas will ignite the fire. Hallelujah. Some of you need your pilot lights lit again. Amen. Hallelujah. And I pray God light it. Let's pray, shall we? Hallelujah. Got a very powerful message tonight. So, and, and I know this is going to minister to people because God put us here to preach his word, to minister to people. It's about people. It's not about us. It's about people. It's about ministering to people. Jesus said, I've come to minister, not to be ministered to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. We need to be like Jesus. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the TV program. I'm thanking you for many, many people dialing into this program, the Holy Spirit, turning them on this station and tuning them in. Father, when they turn it on, tune them in. Give them ears to hear. You said he that has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Open our hearts to receive and graft the word is, that is able to save the soul and to keep on keeping the saved. And Father, I'm thanking you for meeting every need out there today. Father, I pray many people are blessed by this message. They'll get revelation, Father God, and illumination. And I thank you for anointing me as a vessel, Father, and to stand and speak as an oracle of the living God. Father, I'm thanking you for a revival, Holy Ghost revival in this city. I'm thanking you for Holy Ghost outpouring in this city, an outpouring. You said in the last days you pour your spirit out on all flesh. In the book of Joel, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and in the book of Acts, and we ask you to do that. I pray Louisville, Kentucky will be the hub of revival of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And we'll take it out to the four corners of the earth, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father. I pray the churches would come into the unity of the faith and work together and live together and dwell together in unity and love and peace, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. My God, you feel the presence of the Lord. I feel his holy fire. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the precious Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will never leave you or nor forsake you. 
He said it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I go not away, the Father can't send back the promise of the Holy Spirit. I thank God on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And he came in mighty power. And he did something. He impacted that day. People spoke in tongues. I'm a, speaking in tongues is not of the devil. You people out there, you better, you religious hypocrites better get it right. I'm going to tell you, that's almost a point of blasphemy, calling the Holy Spirit, calling him something evil. Speaking in tongues, calling that evil. That's of God. God doesn't give no evil gifts. Amen. That's almost blasphemy. You better watch that and repent. If you don't believe it, you just best shut up. Amen. Don't get yourself condemned. Amen. Hallelujah. If God said it, it's so. Amen. Every mm -hmm. word in this Bible, there's not one word that is void. Every word that word God has spoken is foundational truth. And we need to believe it. Amen. Amen. Name this message tonight. And I know the Lord gave me this. And there's many people in this situation. Stop living in the past. <clears throat> I'm going to say that again. Stop living in in the past. Get on past it. Get into the present. Amen. Quit bringing Amen. the past into your present because it will stop you from going into your future. Come on. I'm telling you something today. God told me and I'm preaching this today. And I pray you get something out of it. Amen. If you go, if you have a Bible, you can write some of these scriptures down because they have to go fast. Now, 26, 27 minutes isn't a lot of time to preach. So I have to hurry up. I'll give you the scriptures. You read them for yourself. You do what God told you to do. Because you know what God told you to do? In, in 2 Timothy, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. So you need to study your Bible to show yourself approved unto God. That's what the Word says. Amen? Amen. Too many people want to listen to the preacher, but they don't want to read for themselves. Amen. And that's why a lot of God's people are spiritually ignorant. Can I hear an amen? And they amen. sin and they're taken into captivity. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 13, 3, 13. Paul said right here, Brethren, I count not myself to have, to have apprehended. Paul knew that he hadn't arrived yet. He knew God was still working on him and working in him. Do you know God, if you're a born-again Christian, God's still working on us and working in us? We haven't arrived yet. That's why the Bible says... Uh, uh, Hallelujah. For the laborer, the workman, not take his hand off the plow and do not look back. Amen. We can't ever think we access everything and think we've done enough for the kingdom of God. There's a whole world out here that needs to be reached. You can't sit down and camp out. It's not time. It's time to be about our Father's business and publish this gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said, I know I haven't arrived yet. I know I haven't gotten where God wants to get me yet, but I'm heading in that direction. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you heading yes. in that direction today? My God, I'm ha we're heading in that direction. We ain't arrived yet, but we're getting there. We're working on it. As long as we let God keep on working on us and working in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Paul said, but this one thing I do, Paul, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to show you a story about Paul here. Paul said this, this is one thing I do. Now, I'm going to tell you about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wasn't always the Apostle Paul. He was Saul, the murderer. Saul, the, the Christian uh, 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 arrester who arrested him, threw him in prisons, wanted to see him dead, wanted to see him killed. We talk about this Saul who stood there at, and, and uh, hallelujah, stepped in his clothes, was put at his feet, and he consented unto his death. So we're not talking about the Apostle Paul. We're talking about the Apostle Paul, but the Apostle Paul become the Apostle Paul after God got a hold of him and transformed him. Amen, and changed him. Amen. Amen, hallelujah. But Saul did a lot of bad things. But I'm going to tell you, not only is Paul preaching the gospel here, Paul's telling you what to do because he know he done been through it. Paul done been there, done that. Some of y'all done been there, done a whole lot of bad things in your past. Come on. Paul had a real bad history here. But God forgave him. Can I hear an amen? God amen. will forgive you too. But something you have to do. Paul knows what he's preaching about here because I'm going to show you why. Paul not only is preaching this, but he did this. And he knows he must forget his past. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. 
forgetting those things which are behind. Let it go. Some of you need to let some things go today and this evening. And tonight, you need to let them go. You carried these weights long enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Even Jesus in the natural could not carry the cross. They had Simeon to pick it up and carry Jesus' cross to Calvary. Jesus couldn't carry it. It was too heavy. You see, when you remember the past, it's too heavy. You can't carry it. You can't carry that. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to forget it. Amen. Hallelujah. Even Jesus couldn't carry that cross in the flesh. Some of y'all carrying crosses in the flesh. They're too heavy. Too heavy to bear. They're too sad, sadful, sorrowful. Come on, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Then Paul went on to say, I press toward the mark for the pride of the high going of God in Christ Jesus. And one, in other words, Paul said, I'm not there yet, but I'm pressing on into it. I'm pressing on forward with God's help. Amen. Hallelujah. And God will make me what I need to be, and he will you too. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you need to stop living in the past. You are in the present today. Get out of the past. What are you doing back there in the past? I'm going to show you something. Watch here. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Paul knew very well what he was saying and preaching. Paul not only knew what he was preaching, he knew what he was saying. Because like I said, he'd been there and done that. Hallelujah. In Acts 7, when they stoned Stephen... In verse 58, they laid his clothes at Saul's feet. Acts 8, 1, write this scripture down. I've got to go fast so I can get it all in. But I want you to get the point of this message. Because there's many of you that need to let the past go. Your past hinders you. Your past brings you much pain. Your past brings you much sorrow. And I know what the Holy Ghost is saying right now. God wants you to let it go right now. Hallelujah. It's causing you much depression, causing you much grief and sorrow. And you don't need to carry that. You don't need that in your life anymore. Hallelujah. I'm going to get you out of passing to the present today, heading for the future. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. In Acts 8, 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death, who's Stephens. Okay. And there was great persecution against the church at Jerusalem. You see, Paul was one of them. Saul who was transformed into Paul, but Saul had a past. You know, we all got a past. Come on. But do you know God could take a Saul and transform him into an apostle Paul? Come on. I got something encouraging to tell you today. We all have a past, but we need to forget that past. And that's what Paul's telling you to do right here. Paul been there, done that, man. He killing Christians. Come on. Been there, done that. You may have a past where you might have been a murderer, a thief. It doesn't matter. Get out of the past. Get into the present today. Because we've all had a past, but God can take that past and put you in the present and set you on your destiny and your future. He took Saul, who had a past, and made him the apostle preacher Paul. Come on. Hallelujah. That's the goodness of God and his mercy. God can take a murderer and make an apostle out of him. Ain't God great? Ain't God good? Man, if anybody deserves some judgment, Paul did. But God said, I'm going to use that old boy. I see something in him I can use. Get out of your past today because God just might look right down inside of you and your heart and say, that's a good old boy there. That's a good old girl there. I just see something in them I can use for bring me glory for my glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Acts 8, 3, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Entering into every house and committed them to prison. Remember, Saul was a Pharisee. He was one of the religious people, a very highly educated religious person of the day. Amen. Sit mm -hmm. under the Professor Gamiel. Amen. Of the day. Hallelujah. One of the top notch teachers of the day. Acts 9 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and in verse uh, um, Acts 9 2. And desire to him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that he, if he found any in this way, whatever they be, men or women or children or whoever, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. You see, Saul was a hardcore, hard-hearted religious person, self-righteous, hated Christians. He wanted to arrest them and even kill them. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a Paul, a Saul who had a past. 
But you know what? When God forgives you, honey, it's out of the blood. God don't remember that past. I'm going to tell you something today. You need to forget that past too. If God forgets it, why do you keep bringing it up? It's the devil that reminds you. It's the devil that is the accuser of the brethren. Can I hear an amen? amen? Who brings it up before your face day and night. I'm going to put it under your feet today under the blood. Can I hear an amen? If God amen. forgives and forgets, you need to forgive and forget yourself. You need Some of you need to forgive yourself, forgive your past, and forget it. Get over it. Come on. Amen. Even the Eagles sung a, a song called Get Over It. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 3, And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined a light around about him, a light from heaven. In verse 4, it says, He fell down to the ground and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul was blinded and could not see. In verse 13 through 20, I don't have time to go through these scriptures. Write them down and go through them. I would love to go through them for you, but it would cut my message off short because <clears throat> we have a limited amount of time and we have to get it all in. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't know the scriptures. I know them, but you need to know them. That's why I'm telling you, write them down. Amen. Hallelujah. God told Ananias, who was a disciple, that Saul was a chosen vessel for him to bear his name to the Gentiles and kings in Israel. God had called him to preach. Amen. Amen. When Ananias prayed for Saul, in verse 18, the scales fell off his eyes, and he was filled with the Holy Ghost, and then he was baptized. And in verse 20, Saul started preaching Christ. This man who killed Christians, went after Christians, beating them up, everybody, he didn't care. Kids, their kids, families, whatever. He's going to bind them and put them in prison. What are they going to do when they put them in prison? The Roman people going to throw them to the lines in, in, the, in the arenas. Can I hear an amen? Come on. Or they going to kill them. They're going to cut their heads off or hang them or whatever. The Romans were mean people, man. They were barbaric. They loved to throw them to the lines, amen, in the, in the big gladiator arenas. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They, they, they got pleasure out of that. Watching people ate up and, and slaughtered and killed. Amen. Aren't people sadistic sometimes? Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't cultures sadistic? Hallelujah. Barbaric. Hallelujah. You see, Saul had a divine visitation from the Lord. All that he did to God's people, the Lord still called him and used him. I'm telling you something today. I'm telling you, that's why Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind. It could have stopped Paul from preaching the gospel. Because the devil could have caught, brought condemnation to him every time he went to preach. Every time he went to open his mouth or speak for God. The devil could have said, well, look what you did to his people. God can't use you. See, that's a lie of the devil. Don't buy the lie of the devil today. And don't let him keep bringing your past up. He has no right. If it's under the blood and you've been a, you're a born-again child of God, I'm going to tell you something. He has no right today. He is the accuser of the brethren. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you how to get rid of the devil when he does that. Brings up your past. Say, you want to bring up my past under the blood? Let me bring up your future, devil. Let me tell you about when you're locked into the bottomless pit, then you're loose and you get your you-know-what kicked again. Then death, hell, and the grave is going to be cast in the lake of fire. So, devil, I have forgiveness. You don't. Guess where you're going? And he'll shut up and quit bringing your past up because every time he brings your past up, bring his future up. Hey, devil, let me tell you about the lake of fire. I've been forgiven. You haven't. Amen. He'll leave you alone. Quit dogging you. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, God can use you too, no matter where you came from or what, you, what you've done in the past. When God calls, he forgives us. We start out anew. 1 Corinthians 5, 17 says we're a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Things of old are passed away. You see, those things of old are passed away. The devil, uh, nobody has a right to bring it back up. To your, in your face and your, in the present life you're living now. Your past is done. When God wipes your slate clean, it's like you never did anything. You're, it's clean. You start out anew. So quit letting the devil bring your past up. Can I hear an amen? He don't mm -hmm. have the right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> God forgives and forgets our past. Our past doesn't. Let me tell you something. Your past does not disqualify you from the call of God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it qualifies you, what you've done in the past. You know why? 
Because he'll just send you back in and reach them kind of people. Because you'll have compassion for them. Let me say at it again. God, because of what you've done in the past, does not disqualify you. You may be a drug addict. You may be a homosexual or an alcoholic. God can take you and change you like he saw. He changed Saul and filled him with the Holy Ghost, baptized him and anointed him. And he can take you and send you back into your culture you come out of, those same people you came out of. He can send you back in there to get them saved and bring them out too. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your past does not disqualify us from God's calling. The Lord still called Paul and used him. Called him with a high calling, an apostle. Maybe you have a high calling on your life today. And that's why the devil keeps bringing your past up so you won't fulfill it. Get rid of the devil today. Amen. Go and fulfill God's call. Who he calls, he forgives, he forgets, and he anoints and equips to do the job he called him to do. Amen. Maybe you have a calling too. Remember, Paul consented to Stephen's death. He was an accessory to murder. He was just as guilty as he, if he had murdered Stephen himself. That's an accessory. He had murder on his mind when he went to Damascus to kill God's people. But Jesus has something different on his mind for Saul. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God that he has mercy. Amen. He was going to save him and fill him with the Spirit and use him. You see, God changed Saul to the Apostle Paul. He went from being used by the devil <laughs> to becoming a devil chaser. Maybe you've been used by the devil in the past. Maybe you've sinned as bad as the devil. But I'm going to tell you something. There's no sin that cannot be forgiven today. And God can transform you into something else and somebody else by his power. Amen. And he can transform you back into his image and likeness again. Amen. Hallelujah. To be like him. God can do the same thing with us. But Paul knew he had to forget the past. I'm sure the devil kept bringing back to Paul's remembrance what he did to God's people. He tried to condemn him and stop him from preaching and going forth for the Lord. He tried to bring Paul's past into his present. Amen? Amen. He tried to make Paul think that God couldn't use him. See, that's the biggest lying trick of the devil that ever was. God can't use you. Look what you've done. Who you think you are? You ain't no Christian. God ain't going to forgive you. That devil's a liar and you better know it today. Forget your past today. Stop living in your past. Leave the past back there like Paul said to do and get into your present. And know God loves you today. The devil hates you. That's why he's trying to stop you. Amen. Mm -hmm. God loves you and he wants to use you today. Amen. To touch others Amen. and tell them about his goodness and mercy and love and what he can do for them too. Amen. Amen. The devil tried to lie and to deceive Paul. That's why Paul said to forget the past. He knew his past would hinder his present, his future, if he kept on dwelling on it and remembering it. It would slow him down or maybe stop him from going forth. Paul was trying to admonish others also to help them by telling them to forget the past and keep on going for the Lord, to run your race and finish it. Paul was encouraging others to do the same thing. Paul not only knew what he was preaching about, he knew what he was saying. He had been there, done that. Some of you are in the same boat. You're saying right now, Lord, how could you use me? You know what all I've done. Don't buy into the lie of the devil. That's what he wants you to believe. So you won't fulfill the will and the call of God in your life. Remember, if God calls you, he qualifies you, not man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Some of you haven't even done as bad as Paul in the past, and God still called and used Paul. He went on to be one of the most powerful New Testament apostles and wrote over half the New Testament. That's pretty amazing considering all he had done in the past. But you see, Paul learned to leave the past in the past. That's why he went on. Some of you need to let the past go to forget it. If God forgave a scoundrel like Saul and transformed him into the apostle Paul, Hey, amen. He'll forgive us for sure and use us for his glory. God's no respecter of persons. What he does for one, he would do for another. Stop letting the devil condemn you. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. When God forgives us, he forgets. He wipes our slate clean. We start over clean, new, like nothing ever happened. Isn't God good? 
Forget the past. Stop remembering it. No matter what, you're, what you've done, if you keep remembering your past, you will never have any victories. Can I hear an amen? Amen. In your life. You're too busy remembering the past failures. Let me tell you today, the devil, that's just a trick and a device of the devil. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Let me tell you, God went on to use Paul. There was other people in the Bible that, that if they had remembered their past, they wouldn't fulfill the will of call of God. Just like Moses was a murderer. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Many other people in the Bible. God's no respecter of persons. Amen. If he took and transformed Saul into Paul, he can transform you today. Some of you need to let the past go today. Pray with me. I want God to free you today, that you can go on and be all you can be for God and fulfill the will and call on your life. Can I hear an amen? Mm -hmm. Say, Father, help me forget the past today. Wipe it out. Deliver me of the past, God. Let me set my eyes and focus on the present and the future. Father, I pray every person right now, the devil keeps condemning them and bringing up the past. I pray you deliver them of that right now and show them their present and their destiny. Show them their destiny and their call and their future today, Father God, that you have mighty plans for them, but they got to let the past go. Father, I pray they let the past go and look forward to the future today and their destiny and fulfilling it with you. If you don't know Jesus today, say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for my sins and I don't want to go to hell. I believe you're the Son of God. You died for me and on the third day you was resurrected. And if I confess that with my mouth and believe it in my heart, I'd be saved. If you say that prayer right now, say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And Lord Jesus, come and be the Lord and Savior in my life. If you said that prayer right now, I'm going to tell you, you just made heaven and you just shun hell. Let the past go. Let it go. Don't remember it anymore. Can I hear an amen? here? And then you'll see a new day dawning for you. And I'm going to tell you, you'll go on with God to fulfill what he has for you because he'll lead and guide you now. Can I hear your name, man? If you just got born again and saved, get in a church and love God and serve him and fulfill the will and call of God on your life. But let the past go. Forget it and go on with God. Can I hear your name, man? Amen. We love you and we'll see you in the next program. God bless you.